All right, guys. So what I want to talk about today on the podcast is um, the cold weather and the batteries for like electric cars and stuff. I think you guys all see on the news, you know, we're having these zero degree temperatures pretty much across the Midwest and then upper, upper Northeast and West. And if everything's just frozen down, kids are missing school and e-learning and all that stuff. And the Teslas, they're breaking down. And it's like this, we saw the picture of all these Tesla cars going to super charging stations and nothing's working and they have to be pushing them around and getting them towed because the batteries are just totally dying, leaving people stranded. So I guess, I guess the question I want to pose is, you know, what's the, what's the solution? How do we make those, do we make the batteries bigger? Do we make them hold charges longer? Is there some way to protect them against the elements? I know that, you know, to, in that regard, we have three vehicles and the two that I left in the garage overnight, you know, went to start them in the morning and they started up no problem. But the one we left out in the driveway, it, it, it started, of course, and it's got a relatively new battery in it, but it didn't seem to start as easily as the other ones. So when you're exposed to the elements, that's happening. So maybe you have a Tesla, always leave it in the garage all the time and you'll be fine. Our heated garage will be perfect. But if you have to park it on the street, what do you do? I mean, what do you think, Marco? Is, can they do something to weatherproof these batteries or to make them stronger? I mean, any ideas how that might work? Cold, it like it it makes it so batteries don't last as long. They drain faster, right? So if they made the batteries bigger, that might help somewhat. But I don't feel like that's a very good solution. Just making the batteries bigger, because that would still mean that in cold weather they still perform um, not so well. Um, maybe they put like an enclosure around it to make it so the battery is warmer or maybe um maybe some heating solution maybe like that it, it realizes that it's certain temperature outside and heats the battery up um maybe some new battery technology will come along which will uh, i think i maybe heard of some new battery technology it's not out or anything i think it's more concept than it is reality right now but like it's supposed to increase the capacity of batteries while making them smaller as well and and uh and not wear as much you know, the problem with lithium ion batteries is is that they wear uh pretty fast actually like in phones it's like three years and then your battery starts starts going to crap yeah yeah, well, and, and, and to that point you're making about the enclosures, I do know that with just a regular 12, you know, regular 12, 14 volt car battery that all internal combustion engines use to get started, you know, you have the battery and they actually do sell a battery pack and it actually is an enclosure. It's like a felt type of thing, kind of like an insulation and people in places in cold weather, they'll have the battery there and they'll have that insulation and it actually is a compartment that will close it. So that 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 particular that regular, you know, mercury muretic acid battery that the car uses to start does have that insulation around it in colder environments. So then the thing would be, could you put that on the lithium ion batteries? But then the thing I would think about is what about these fires, right? I mean, we, we're, we've we've seen Tesla's catch on fire and it's just unstoppable. The temperatures are just going zillion degrees and there's pretty much you have to let the car burn itself out so if they put some kind of you know coating or some kind of thing around the battery to keep it colder to keep it warmer in cold weather would that potentially you know raise the the risk of fire you know and then they have to think well you know we put this around the battery and then all of a sudden the battery catches on fire and that's more combustible material right there that might make things worse um yeah, and then of course you make the batteries bigger, and then you're making them heavier, and now pretty soon you got a six thousand pound car. You know, at a certain point, you know, it, I mean, we all know Teslas do weigh quite a bit more. You know, a comparable size Tesla compared to another a regular car, I think Teslas weigh more just because of the batteries. And yeah, they don't have an engine and transmission drilling really only one speed. And they don't have exhausts and fuel systems and all those other ancillary systems that an ICE, you know, internal combustion engine uses. But the bigger you make the batteries. The, the the bigger they're going to be, the heavier they're going to be. So yeah, there's got to be some way to keep them a little bit warmer, so that way they're because the cold zaps the power. Because to that end, we went ahead and we used our GoPro and we used the drone the other day when it was really cold. And yeah, we only got a two minutes of flying time, and the battery starts dropping. We should be able to land this thing. So everybody knows cold weather zaps batteries, and then the question is how to deal with that, and uh, how do people in cold weather deal with that with the Teslas? I mean, they're they're big cars, but yeah, I don't know. 
the, what the solution is other than Tesla's dying in the middle of winter time. And then we had that one with the Cybertruck guys with the Tesla. Remember that? The, the real big weird concept Cybertruck that look, looks totally bizarre. And they went, they went off-roading and somehow the thing got stuck. I don't know if I got stuck on the axle or if I got stuck in the wheel. They got stuck like in the frame in the middle and they, and they had to get a, a Ford F-350 well, in there. Well, a lot of, super- a lot of, a lot of things that have there. happened with the Cybertruck. It's not, it's not out yet for a reason, but but I think mm-hmm. the more famous one um, with the with the Cybertruck isn't that it, like got into a ditch or anything and they couldn't get it out or they had to fish it out or something. But the more famous one was he was talking about how the um, Elon Musk was talking about how the glass was going to be bulletproof or or something yeah. along those lines, like so it couldn't be broken in too easy or you can get shot or something attacked. And so he had someone go with like a sledgehammer and break the window, but but right it there. broke. But it broke instead of handling it like it was supposed to. That was, that was pretty funny. But there's there's a reason why the cyber truck isn't out. So, right. So and then, and then the cyber truck isn't out, and 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 then you know then the other question I want is: Are we have extreme cold weather? are all electric vehicles, vehicles that have no, they're not hybrids or anything, you know, like, like they, like they also have, you don't have a gasoline motor as well. Are they almost like before their time with this cold weather? Because right now we're in this massive cold snap. And what if we, what if our winters with climate change, the winters get worse. So maybe this time next year, instead of being zero degrees, maybe it's five below or 10 below and it's consistent. They're going to have to get a handle on that battery thing. Whereas if you have a hybrid, you know, boom, the gasoline, engine starts up and then it goes ahead and it recharges the battery sort of like a regular conventional thing does with the alternator and everything and then you're good good to go so we're going to have to see where the uh, where the batteries um wind up but that was definitely interesting this week when we saw all the teslas at the supercharging station and and they couldn't yeah. get moving these cars and people are pushing them and they're towing them and people are getting stranded so, yeah but um, so well that's a problem i think i think people can prevent it though i think i think those people they probably um didn't have it very like fully charged so like if, mm-hmm. if you're at home and that happens i don't I mean it it might be too cold to charge the battery but i'm not sure if you like you have it in a garage and you charge it then you can go out obviously you're gonna have less battery life in the car but i wouldn't i mean i would only see the cold as a like a big problem like like you're saying like you're out somewhere and you have to get your car towed because it ran out of battery and you can't charge it but i feel like just you just in order to counter that you just have to make sure that your battery's full like wherever wherever you go and make sure you're not going right. to drive somewhere on half of a battery and then stay somewhere for like three hours or something however long it takes and then you come back and oh look your battery's dead it won't start so. Right, and and that and that goes to the problem with with the grid, really, because right now if I leave my house and I only have an eighth of a tank of gas, and it's in the winter time, and I get some water and it and and it freezes up, well, I know I can go ahead and get some heat, and I can pour it in there, and I can you know go to the gas station to get some gas, and I can get the car working in relatively short order. But with these electric cars, like you said, you know, you're leaving your house and you're only at one third charge for the battery. And then you go to Kohl's and you're in shopping for three hours and then you come out with a hundred, you know, two, a couple hundred bucks worth of stuff. And you put it in the trunk and try to start the car and then boom, now your battery's dead, you know, and then the supercharging stations aren't working in the cold weather. And, you know, you can't just walk down to the corner gas station and, you know, and get a gallon of gas and pour it in there. You know, it doesn't work like that. So they're going to, there's got to be some way to. I still think electric, I, I'm all in favor of electric technology. And I know the electric cars are incredibly fast. The guy across the street from us, he's got a Tesla Plaid. I haven't gone for riding it, but I know in perfect conditions, what can do zero to 16, 1.9 seconds or something. I mean, I can't even imagine that kind of acceleration. It's mind blowing. But for right now, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to put my family into an electric vehicle and say, let's go for a, let's go for a ride, you know, and then you always have to be con- constantly monitoring you know, that charge, that charge on that battery. And all of a sudden you look down like, oh, dad, uh, dad, we're down to a quarter. We're only down to 20% of our battery on your phone. Yeah, whatever. You can plug it in, you know, and it charges as you're, as you're using it. But the car, it's, it's something different. That's another thing. You think we'll ever get to the point where you can have like a portable charger in the car and like we have with our phones, like a battery. Well, you, would just, you, can... you would just have a separate battery in the car that you would just uh-huh. like s- swap out. If if you could get like an easily swappable battery in the car, and then you can bring a spare battery with you, that would be pretty cool, I guess. 
Um, but also, like, going, uh, again, that's why hybrid, uh, hybrids are also good, like you were saying, because you have a, um, you have, like, a, an actual engine in there still and, and gas, and so what you can do is you can actually, you charge the battery while you're driving it using the, the gasoline, and so mm -hmm. I think may, maybe, no, never mind, sorry, what I, what I was thinking actually would not work, I, I was, maybe, maybe you would just have a, a second battery in the car that would have insulation yeah. around it that is right. just meant for the winter time. Mm -hmm. but i'm, I'm not yeah, sure yeah. how viable that would be well maybe uh maybe a high density type battery maybe maybe they have the regular batteries and they weigh a certain amount of weight and they have a certain density to them in the car and then maybe like you said you have this one that you charge up just specifically for that and it's a higher density battery and maybe it's got a certain amount of range that it would have and you you bring that with you and you put that in the trunk and most of these electric vehicles with the trunks in the front right so you have it in there and like, okay I'm, I'm down to 20 percent and you know i got you know, 80 miles to go and it's, I know that it's 90 miles to the next charging station. So yeah, you can ancillarily hook up that battery and then you'd have it. And of course, if that battery dies and you're, I mean, at a certain point, gas or electric or, or, or whatever, you know, if you run out of juice, you run out of juice, you run out of a charge, you run out of charge. I've, I've run out of gas before in my life and I've had to go ahead and, you know, walk a couple, walk a few blocks to a gas station and get it. It's just a matter of getting the grid to that point where we, are we ever going to be able to get to that point where if somebody's electric car dies, it's not going to be that big a deal to get them. Because right now you can walk with a, you can walk with a gas can to the, to the gas station and you can go ahead and get some gas and, you know, one and a half gallons and pour it back in like we did with our, with, with our Saturn, you know, a summer and a half ago, we were putting some gas because we thought maybe the car would run out of gas. Turned out it was a battery in the alternator. But, you know, that's the thing is, you know, what are you going to be able to, maybe they'll have it where you can walk that, that, that block and a half or two blocks to a quote unquote gas station, but it's really an electric charging station. And they can give you some kind of, like you said, portable battery or something like that, where you can bring it to your car and get it charged up enough that you can drive it to a charging station. Otherwise you have to get a yeah. tool, you have to push it out. It's but, really, yeah, but the problem with that know. is they would, they give you a battery and then like, what about returning? And I would think they would, well, unless unless, unless they charge you, obviously for the battery, right. I guess. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it had to be a deposit. So you show up there, and it's okay. And and then how much would that, I mean? Would you have to put down a fifteen hundred dollar deposit? You know, on the because these yeah, batteries are not. Yeah, you have to buy. You wouldn't just be buying electricity. You would be buying an entire battery at that point. So right. if you, if you buy an entire rechargeable battery, that's that's a lot of expense right there. But maybe versus just just charging your car it's way more expensive to get an entire right. battery um and then maybe maybe something more vi cost viable would be like a uh a non-chargeable battery that they give you that's like one use if you ever get in mm -hmm. that situation so it'd be cheaper right. for you and them but i i don't that doesn't sound great really it doesn't doesn't sound as easy and um uh cost effective as going down and just getting a with your right you know, yeah and getting some gas yeah because right now you have like they're, they're what's called burner phones right people buy these burner phones yeah. and they're basically disposable phones and you know when i was growing up my dad had this uh Zippo lighter and he would always put lighter fluid inside the cotton and soak it up and you had to you had the wick and you had the flint and all this and you buy the Zippo lighter to have the thing for 30 years Then they came up with the butane lighters and they were disposable they would throw it out right so same type of situation and maybe they're going to get to the point where they have the technology where they're almost disposable car batteries like we have disposable regular batteries now we can imagine a landfill right now you got a you know you got a D battery and it's the size of my thumb right you just throw it out in the garbage all of a sudden you got these car batteries and they're freaking huge and you're throwing them in it so I don't know it, it's you know all that waste and all that stuff right now we have emissions and all that stuff being given given off by regular cars and obviously electric cars don't have that but then those batteries when they die what's that going to be the cost and then what's the cost of the replacing the car i heard somebody bought a Ford, whatever whatever kind of ford car it was with a battery when an electric car and then i think i think he bought it for his daughter for like ten thousand dollars and then the battery died he brought it to the dealer and they said it was fourteen thousand dollars for the battery you know so yeah that, <laughs> that's a thing yeah it's like um that yeah i was about to say you're talking about emissions about regular cars and electric in theory is supposed to be better but the way the uh companies uh uh do their things like like tesla they'll um they'll 
the, the batteries themselves will be so expensive that it's kind of like Apple, like a repair will be so expensive. So in this case, a repair as in battery installation will be so expensive that at that point, it might be cheaper or just slightly more expensive and you go, oh, might as well get the better newer version for a slightly increased price because of how expensive the battery is. And so then what happens to the car? Maybe you sell the car, but then someone would have to have a spare battery because where are they going to get the battery from? The, the the company, right? And then they'll also they'll also have to pay that big premium for the battery. So then that excludes you from like selling the car with no battery because no one wants to spend the money on the battery. They'll just buy a new car at that point. And then so so then at that point, where does the car go? It might go to a landfill and that ends up actually creating more waste than just using a regular car because, yeah, because the battery won't you... last won't last as long as a normal car will the battery will last a few years and a car can last well over like 10. yeah i mean with the regular car you know i mean we had this brand am and we just got rid we only got rid of it because it was rusted out the engine was still working the transmission was still working the exhaust was still working everything was still working it just got rusty and i got tired of dealing with it so with a regular ice internal combustion engine car you can replace the various components at one time you can say okay my transmission went out boom i just replaced that oh my engine went out boom i replaced that my exhaust went out boom i replaced that my fuel system went out you did it you know you, but electric cars the, the whole heart and soul of it is the battery and that goes like you were saying about the, the cost of the battery then you can get the aftermarket like when i go to buy replacement parts for our cars i never go to a dealer i know if i go to a dealer and i'm going to spend 300 dollars on a rotor you know i can go to advance and i can pay 100 bucks on a rotor and i can get a you know pretty much the same warranty and i'm done you know but these batteries the, the, the manufacturers who make the cars they make those batteries and they control those prices because there's no there's no there's no competition and then maybe there is competition and then all of a sudden the battery prices start dropping then the manufacturer goes ahead and says you know what i'm going to redesign this then they do a redesign and now all that competition is gone because they just resigned redesigned it all so there's always a way that they built in their own market dominance to that so that's another problem with electric stuff is they're building in market dominance and if you get a Ford electric vehicle, you have to get a Ford battery. You can't go to Advance, you can't go to Riley's and just buy a battery from them. And if you could get to the point where they do that, Ford would probably go, Ford or Tesla would probably go ahead and redesign the whole freaking car and the whole battery to make everything all obsolete. So nobody's gonna wanna put in hundreds of millions of dollars to get a factory to start making out these aftermarket batteries when they know the manufacturer is just gonna go ahead and turn around and, and make everything obsolete for them anyway. So the manufacturers of an electric vehicle, I think, they kind of have you, you know, by the neck a little bit. They kind of have you, they kind of have you by the ball, so to speak, on that, you know. And they're a little more in control, and that's part of the problem I have with electric vehicles. I'm afraid to go down that road because then my options for doing things myself and for fixing those systems as they fail are going to be greatly diminished. As opposed to now, I can just, you know, I can go anywhere I want after auto, after you know, auto, auto market, you know, aftermarket auto stuff is just huge. You can do whatever, billions of dollars, but. How are you going to be able to do that electric vehicles? I don't know. I it, it's it's. I think it's going to be years before, uh, decades maybe even before electric vehicles really um, come into play as a as a hundred percent. But to that end, Porsche, I think by the end of twenty twenty five or twenty twenty six, they're only going, their plan is only to have one internal combustion engine. I think that's going to be the nine eleven Carrera, and it's going to. I think it's going to be the three point six. Other than that, you know, everything's going to be all electric. So we're going to see. But then again, people who are going to buy, you know, kind of for to spend a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in a Porsche probably don't really don't care about the cost of the yeah. batteries in the first place anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, and also <laughs> with more <laughs> with yeah, with more manufacturers that um making electric cars, that'll create more competition itself because then mm -hmm. if you go with one company and they're replacing parts are this much, but you go with the other and those replacement parts are cheaper, then in, in theory that should create competition for the problems we just talked about so hopefully just hopefully. that uh the market will bring down everything and options shouldn't be so uh limited right yeah it's the uh, what is it the invisible hand right the invisible yeah. hand of the free market you know it's it's there to take care of things supply and demand and we know supply and demand works and we'll just have to uh we'll have to see how it plays out so again, everybody, uh, thanks for listening in. And my name's Steve, and my uh, 
my assistant, Mr. Markle. Appreciate you being on with me as well. And uh, we'll try to hit you guys back next week, about the same time, same bad channel with some more conversations about cars. Later.